Hey guys, this is Micah from Epium. Today we're going to take a look at how I did this awesome Street Fighter composite. This was a shoot done for a couple of my friends and they wanted something different than your normal cosplay photo. They wanted something a bit more gritty, a bit more emotional and real, but still had something true to the game. This is what I came up with. Cami on Guile's stage with the setting sun piercing through the winning pose. Let's see what we started with. The original photo was taken around 10 p.m. at night in an alley in downtown Seattle. It was shot with a Canon 5D Mark II and a 70-200 2.8L Mark II lens. There is a four bulb softbox to the upper right of the camera and two vehicle headlights to the back left. The blue screen was used so that I could pull a clean key in post. Now that we have the basic info out of the way, let's get started with the tutorial. So the first thing that I did was I duplicated the background layer and named it Clean Layer. Now I'm going to click on the background layer again and I'm going to create a new layer between clean layer and background and I'm going to fill it with 50% gray. Click on the clean layer and duplicate that layer and move it underneath the layer one and just call it back up in case I need to go back and change something later. And I'm going to change layer one to BG. So I'm going to select the clean layer and I'm going to marquee out the areas that I want to keep. Now I'm going to choose the magic eraser tool to get rid of the background key. And I'm just going to change the tolerance to about 30 and click anywhere on the blue and just start removing that background. Then I'm going to choose the regular eraser tool and just clean up anything that the magic background eraser might have missed. And then we'll choose the background eraser tool and change the settings until it removes the blue from the hair and other areas of the image. You might have to play with the settings depending on your composite to get it right. Once it looks good, we'll choose the brush tool and we'll change the blend mode to color. And we'll make sure to lock transparency on the clean layer. And we're just going to brush out any places that may have spill from the blue background or just don't quite look right. We want to blend as much of the image as possible so that it looks a lot better. And if you have to, clean up any other areas that you may have missed with your background erase. Now we want to clean up the edges and whatnot, so we're going to command select the clean layer and go to select modify smooth and I'm going to smooth it by two pixels. Make sure it looks good. And then I'm going to inverse that selection and select modify feather. I'm going to do that by two pixels. And if the feather looks good, I'm going to delete it a couple times. And if it's a little bit too much, you can just go in your history tab and go back a bit. Once it looks great, deselect. There are a couple ways of doing the next part of this tutorial. I chose this way because it's easier on the Photoshop cache while I record the tutorial. Otherwise, I may have leg issues. So if you know of the other ways, go ahead and do that. This is just the way I chose for this. I'm going to select all and choose the background layer and copy that layer and then make an entire new document. Choose image, image rotation, 90 degrees clockwise. And go back to my original image and click on the clean layer and command copy it and paste it into the new document. Then I'm going to put it in the area that I want it to be and transform it. Make sure to lock down dimensions. And change it to the size that I want to fit in my comp. Then I'm going to zoom in and just bump the layer down a little bit so that we don't see that feathering on the bottom of the legs. Uh, that looks pretty good. 
For the background, I decided to use a rendition of Guile's stage from an awesome artist called Sith X. You can find their work on deviantart.com. Amazing work, you should definitely check them out. And I'm going to select all and copy and come back into our new document and paste it in. And I'm gonna transform it to be somewhat larger than Cami. Once I like the location, I'm just gonna hit enter and lock it down. And then I'm going to choose Filter, Blur, Field Blur. And I'm gonna put the locator on her eye. And I'm just gonna change the blur to about 37 pixels. And that'll give us a nice camera feel, depth of field. And I wanna take a second to plug our Flickr. You can check out this photo and the rest of our composite photos and our Project 366 photos and everything else that we do that is a part of Epium on flickr.com slash Epium. Definitely check that out. Please comment and favorite our photos. Add us as friends and we'll do the same for you. Now let's add our adjustment layers and we're gonna start with the curves. We're just gonna make the image pop a bit more and start to blend the colors together by adding a levels and a couple gradient maps. Now this was bothering me quite a bit. It's the cast from the headlights on the back part of her cuff. So I'm just gonna use the clone tool and the brush tool to get rid of that nasty shadow. So once everything's complete, I'm gonna take the image into After Effects to add the flare. Uh, the thing is, is I don't wanna use the PSD file in After Effects because it will completely bog down the system and take way too long when all I need is a reference layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to save for web and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG and just choose the destination. And then we'll take that flattened image into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects, and I'm gonna drag in that JPEG that we just created. And I'm gonna drag it down and make a new comp. And I'm gonna make sure that the duration is only one second. I'm gonna go up to Layer, make a new layer, make a new solid. And I'm gonna change the name to Flare. Make sure that it's comp size and the color is black. Hit OK and OK. We're going to change the blend mode to screen. Then I'm going to choose Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares. And you can get your copy of Video Copilot Optical Flares at their website. Andrew Kramer is pretty much awesome, and everything that they make is amazing. You should definitely pick up a copy. So I'm gonna hit options and go into the flares and we're gonna choose a flare that looks like a setting sun. So I'm just gonna go through my presets here until I find something that looks good. And this glam preset looks great. But there's a couple elements that I wanna get rid of so I'm just going to delete all of those elements. And once it gets to the point that I want it, I'll hit OK. And now I'm going to move around the position XY and change the center position a bit just to get a nice glow. And I really want that rainbow hoop to pop. Once it looks good, I'm going to delete the JPEG from the comp, change the blending mode back to normal. And then I'm gonna click Composition, Save Frame As, File. Change the name to whatever you wanna change the name to. And then hit Render. And once the output's done, we're gonna go back into Photoshop CS6. And I'm going to select all and copy it. And select between layer one and layer two and paste it in. Choose the blending mode screen.
And let's add a couple adjustments on it to make it look a little bit better. So I'm going to alt click it and attach it to layer 4, the optical flares layer. And I'm just going to change the curves until it really pops and we get a nice rainbow color. Now I'm going to add a mask to the optical flares layer. And I'm just going to make it a little less intense coming from right behind her. It's just a little overpowered. And we'll clean up the rainbow just a bit and get it to pop a bit more. Now the last and most important thing about any composite is matching the comp to your original footage. And I'm going to do that by adding a noise layer. So I'm going to add a new layer and choose to fill it with 50% gray. And then I'm going to select filter, noise, add noise. I'm going to go about 42.44% uniform distribution and hit OK. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. And bring the opacity down to about 5% for now. Now what I want to do is I want to transform the noise layer to get the size of the noise to match the size of the noise on the original photo. So I'm going to change the attributes to about 127% and see how that looks. And I want to match the size to a high contrast area on the original image. So I'm using this green and white part of the leg. And this looks pretty darn close, so we'll go with that. And we'll take a look at the rest of the image and make sure that the noise matches. And it's all looking pretty good. I can't begin to tell you how important it is to match the noise to the original photo. This is what separates a good composite from an extraordinary composite. A lot of people miss this fact. And it's just one of those things that if you want your photo to appear realistic, you have to match all of the elements. Anyway, this is pretty much our completed image, and the only thing I have left to do is re-importing it into Lightroom and adding the logos and exporting it for web. I want to thank you guys for watching, and please check out our previous tutorial, The Hunger Games Composite, and our previous video, 111111. And please make sure to subscribe to Epium for future tutorials behind the scenes and our awesome web series. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time.